right, guys, we are at the Florida Audio Expo Paralisten Room. What an incredible demo we just heard. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with AudioHawks. We're here with a rock star, Dan Romer. How you doing, Dan? Great. This guy has been involved in audio for, I don't know, decades, right? 30, almost 30 years. 30 though. years. You yeah. don't look it. You don't Thanks. look it. I appreciate that. But let me tell you guys something. I respect Dan so much for the work that he does with multiple brands and now with Paralisten. And this demo that we heard today so far, Don called it last night. Don called me, told me, this is the best sound at the show. I, I walk the floor, it's the best sound, you gotta come here and listen. I'm like, you know, Don kinda over promotes things because he's a promoter, but you know what? He was spot on because we've been listening to music up here. We've been hearing some great demos in all the different rooms. This room really caught my ear, so to say, and it's not even the most expensive speakers. It's literally the R series. They're, I, would, I wouldn't call them entry level. It's, it's our entry level, but really it's just the step down. Same technology as yeah. we use in the S series, but half the price. So Dan set up this really unique system. Basically, we're looking at a pair of R5M monitors, R5M, yep. and he's got two 10-inch subs from the R-Series. And this whole system has basically base-managed system, but there's no base management in the processor itself. Dan did some trickery with the DSP in the subwoofers to get everything to align. I want you to talk a little bit about that because we were talking before about, there's a lot of advantages. If you want to put speakers out in a room, you get a, an advantage for imaging, but then you have what's called SBIR problems. You get a dip usually in the 80 to 100 hertz range. You solve that when you base manage these speakers and you put subs towards the front of the room behind the speakers in the corners, you get great coupling. But having multiple subs really is the cake for it because there's a lot of advantages. Maybe you could talk a little bit about what yeah, you did. Yeah, absolutely. So coming to the show, we got the room dimensions. And uh, so Eric did some comp style modeling. And he's like, Dan, you're in trouble. There's going to be some serious suck outs in the room. And it's going to be hard to fix just by moving the speakers and the couch around. And we had already determined that we were going to bring the R series here and, and give people an opportunity to listen to S series and then come listen to R series. And then we had the idea, well, let's let's introduce subs into the two channel and let's do it as simple as possible so instead of doing full base management all we did was we took the r5m which can be vented or sealed we made it sealed so it's naturally rolling off at 80 hertz so it's got a high pass um, mm -hmm. the processor's not doing anything in that respect and then you use the two subs and actually you, you play around with the crossover until you find the right point um, phase that type of thing um, we blend them in at about 100 hertz and that allows the PQs on board each sub to be individually configured to then smooth out the response. And what's really cool in this room is that we get response flat down to 14 hertz. And then with the subs, you can, you can tailor the level of the bass to, to your taste. You can bring it up a little bit or you can make it flat to what the speakers are. And the end result, you, you know, the benefit is obvious you get more bass. But the next benefit we were just talking about mm -hmm. is what it does to the mid and the treble, it's actually frees that up. And um, the overall experience can be quite amazing. And that's exactly what I heard, because in the other room you have the R7Ts, which is their flagship speaker. And you guys know I have that in the Audioholic Smart House in the family room. I listened to that demo and it sounded good as expected, but this demo just blew it out of the water. There's more clarity. And the thing is when you get the bass right, when you have good modal control in the room and you've got extension and you've got output, you start freeing up, like you were saying, the mid-range and the treble. And what I heard here was so much detail in the treble, such a focus and anchored center image I was getting from where I was sitting, and it was just clean. I mean, I've never heard Perilous and Subs personally. I know James Larson basically declared it the most accurate subwoofer he's ever measured, but now I got to experience their entry-level subs, and I could not believe how articulate the bass was, just so clean and effortless. And I mean, what are, what are we talking about price-wise with the monitors? And so the, the monitors subs? are uh, six thousand a pair, and then the subs are four thousand each. That's actually our entry-level push-pull sub, so that starts you off in the per listen subwoofer realm. So these speakers cost less than most of the cables at this show, and you're getting you're getting amazing sound stage. You're getting amazing dynamics. You're getting an audiophile experience. And let me just tell you guys, if anyone's on the fence about 
You can't have subwoofers in a right. two-channel system. That's because you've never heard it properly set up. This is completely integrated. You don't even know there's subwoofers in here. You're thinking you're listening to a giant monolithic tower speaker, and in reality, you're listening to a small speaker that's very capable, mm. hitting over 115 dB, right? Right, and that that's just it. We're trying to, to, to debunk the conventional wisdom that you can't put a sub with a high-fidelity speaker um, without detracting from the outcome. And we're tr trying to show that with the subs, you can actually improve the overall outcome. The well, sub offers a huge benefit. And part of that is also, you got to realize these subwoofers are no joke. These have the lowest group delay that we've measured in a sub, so their transient response is excellent. So you're talking about, I hate to say the word fast, but it's... If we use it subjective, it's, it's totally okay, fine. Okay, you're yeah. getting <laughs> fast bass, my friends. If you're worried about subwoofers slowing up your bass experience, you're not getting it with these subwoofers. Having two subs is a huge advantage, like I said, because you get modal control, you get even bass throughout the room, and also by having two subs towards the front of the room like this, you could cross them over higher, so now you increase the system dynamic range. So you're not crossing them over at 80, you're crossing them over about 100, right? Right. And then you have the PEQ function, so you could have advantage of EQing and linearizing the bass response all the way up to 100 hertz, and that's where you get that incredible blend between the main speakers and the subwoofers, and it sounds like one fluid sound. That's, that's anything else on. you want to? That's spot on, Gene. That, thank you for explaining that in such detail. No, it's, you know, it's exactly what we're trying to show, and, and and there's just such a wonderful benefit once you blend the subs in with the speakers. The outcome is is still audiophile, and it's audiophile, you know, on steroids. Well, Dan, it's awesome to finally meet you face to face. We've been on camera a lot on the virtual press events on Audioholics, and we'll be doing more of those because we have a lot of topics we want to discuss. This guy's a veteran. We want to get him more involved on our channel. Guys, don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. Appreciate your support. Get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. Hit the thumb up, hit that subscribe button, and until next time, my friends, keep listening.